I think we are ready to start, uh, even though people are fully still coming in. Um, so I'm going to be talking about the back end of the front end. Now is the final time to get out if you are in the wrong session. <laughs> so, uh, my name is Lauri Estola. Uh, in Drupal Org with uh, Lauri uh, with three eyes. Uh, you can see a first picture. This is the oops. This is the picture of me building the first website I built. Oops, there's something wrong happening. That thing. <coughs> Hopefully it doesn't. Uh, I'm Drupal State System co maintainer. Uh, I work for a Finnish Drupal agency called Droid. Uh, they are pretty awesome because this year they they have sponsored me to fix the last remaining digital in the play. So they were pretty awesome. Thank you. Um, I, I also love kittens. I added 68 of them to the play car. Uh, and prompting, I keep adding them all the time. Can you close the door? Can you close? Okay. <laughs> Yeah, there's lots of noise coming from there. Better shut it down. Okay. Also, I like to break party in the pool. I've done it twice so far. Both, both, both times I actually fixed it afterwards, but that's my hobby. Um, so this presentation will be about Drupal team system. Why the title of the session is not Drupal team system is because people confuse Drupal team system do different things. They associate it with theming or something else. Even though this session is not about theme, Morten will be doing a session after this one about theming. It will be really bad presentation, so don't go there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, everyone knows that. And this one will be more about what's behind the stuff Morten is talking about. So, what Drupal team system actually is is not about theming. It's is that the, the motor behind everything is a way to provide flexible markup in a safe way. That's kind of like what team system in your way is. Let's say if you build headless applications, you don't use Drupal team system, then you are building your own team system in, the, in your headless application. So then if you're building headless Drupal, this session doesn't apply for, for those use cases. Uh, so what what's been done for Drupal 8 team system and Drupal 8 is we've simplified the team system. At least that's what we've tried to achieve. Uh, many, many other parts in uh, Drupal 8 have been actually made more complex. At least they might sound more complex. But the team layer hopefully is more, more simpler than it was in Drupal 7. There is lots of changes in Drupal 8 team system though. Uh, as everyone knows, we have tweets and lots of other changes. But those are tools that allows us to make it simpler than it used to be in Drupal 7. So, pretty much everything we've done in the Drupal 8 team system uh, has been made to allow more flexible theming uh, in a simpler way. So, let's start what we've, what we've done. Uh, these are a few uh, overall changes, like very, uh, very uh, I would say, they, these affect everywhere, these affect everything. Uh, I'm going to cover these first, then I'm going to go through the current pipeline that we have about the team system. But let's start with the big changes. Uh, most of this stuff is that we've just removed something. So, the process layer was in Drupal 7 uh, for processing variables from when they were arrays into a string so that they can be printed in the template. Because PHP is really bad at uh, printing array, as you know, you can't just print array and automatically something happens. You have to process it somehow, so you have to render it or do something else. So let's say if you have classes, you have to convert them from an array into a string. But, that is, that is fine, but the problem with that is after you convert something from an array into a string, you cannot modify it afterwards because you lose all the metadata, you lose all the structure. So, let's say in the preprocess layer, you have very well structured array of classes where you can easily modify what's inside there. But in the process layer, we destroy that array and convert it into a string. 
which makes it almost impossible to change the classes in the template. So whenever you wanted to change classes, you had to do it in preprocess function, and you couldn't be couldn't do it in the template. That is not only that doesn't apply only for the classes. That applies for multiple different things, uh, like render arrays. Uh, like in this case, they are being rendered already in the uh, process function. Okay, the problem is with the laser. Uh, so, uh, no laser today. So, as you can see, the page top and page bottom are being rendered inside the process function. So that they can be only printed in the HTML template. They don't have to be rendered there anymore. But if you want to change that up to this point, it is impossible. You don't have the metadata of the uh, page top or page bottom any anymore. Except we have it under the page. But this is, this is the workaround for this. In many cases, we just override what was already in there. The other problem this causes is we are in the process layer. We don't know what's going to happen in template. So here, we are rendering the page top and page bottom, even though we don't know if it's actually ever going to be used in the template. And this happens every time HTML template is being used. So if someone decides not to print page top and page bottom, we just, we just render them for no reason. So that doesn't make any sense. This is just one use case. This is just a one use case. It might, might sound very small, but after we have all the modules, after we have everything around the templates, there is quite a lot of things happening in the process layer and quite a lot, lot of processing happening for nothing because any of the modules might do their own crazy processing that the team doesn't know about. And it might be just for nothing, just for maybe a single use case. So it is basically just lost CPU power that we don't want to do. So what we did was we removed the process layer and replaced all this functionality with the stuff that we provide for us. So then we can automate all these tasks. So what, let's say if you need to render something, it happens automatically and it's done by tree. And that actually gets us for what we did for team function. The problem with the process layer is a little bit similar as what we have with team function. So when you run the team function, it is just function called team, not team functions. When you, when you use the team function, it will convert your nicely structured array into a string. The problem is the same. You can't change it really after that, and you don't know whether it's going to be used ever or not. Uh, but the reason why I guess people were doing this in Drupal 7 was because if you don't use theme function, then you have to remember to call render function inside the template. And that, that is not what the, the theme developers want to do. Do you want to call render function in the template? Do you understand what it does? I guess most of the people that are teamers don't understand what the render function does. They, 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 they've been just told you have to run team, a render function on this. And then you have to run render function on everything because you don't know which variables are going to be renderized and which are not going to be. And that is not very nice. So in Drupal 8, everything is being rendered automatically. So if you have a render array in Drupal 8, you just output it in your tree, tree template, and it will be rendered automatically. We can figure out, okay, this is an array. We probably shouldn't be drinking, uh, we probably shouldn't be printing. <laughs> <laughs> we probably shouldn't be pr uh, printing a array. <laughs> so, we, we should render this before actually printing this out. Um, that is basically just what Tweet provides out of the box for us. It's really simple. With PH, plain PHP, with that PHP template, that is impossible. So, that is what we allowed us to do. So everything is now a render array. And you should only use the AAA version of this. You shouldn't be use those. We don't have those two use cases anymore. So you have to always output render array. So let's say if you if you create your own builder of your own controller, you always have to re return a render array. Let's say if you if you only output plain markup from there, there's no nothing to render in the template, then you just use render array and the hash markup to output that. You can't output plain markup from there anymore because we don't support that. Then we come to the theme functions that are the other fun part. How many of you like theme functions? 
Anyone likes team function? If you like team function, raise your hand. I have one person who likes team functions. That's awesome because uh, like two weeks ago, I did my first session where no one liked team, uh, team functions. So it's the only exception I've had so far. But here I have a team function from Drupal 7, team item list. Team item list is a really simple thing, or it sounds really simple. It's, its job is to provide one UL LI kind of element. But to create that UL LI, we have to have this much of code. And if you want to overwrite this, you have to copy this piece of PHP, and you have to let people like Morton edit PHP. <laughs> and after five minutes, it probably includes more than five fatal errors. And then the backend developers come to rescue. And that's not how things should be done in the front end. So what we have in Drupal 8 is we have templates for everything. And in the big template, things are a little bit less easy to mess up, mess up. Also, as you can see, this big template, it fits nicely the screen. The other one didn't. It even half of that function didn't fit that screen. So also the size of the, the amount of logic needed in these two is completely different. So in Drupal 8, they remove team functions completely. There is no team functions in Drupal 8 anymore. You have few team fu functions that are being used for testing purposes because we still allow creating team functions in Drupal 8, but they are now deprecated. Actually, we deprecated them yesterday from Drupal 8. So no more team functions. And if you want to hear how serious we are about the supporting team functions, is that we've already been talking what kind of warnings can we give for people who have team functions. So the, the plan right now is that in 8.1, if you have any team functions on your site, we are going to give you a warning about that on your site. Um, obviously, it's only in your local environment when you have some development bomb turned on. But anyway, we are going to give you warnings if you have team functions. So don't write any new team functions. If you have team functions from, from your Drupal 7 code, convert them into templates. Uh, even there is like uh, some really extreme use cases, let's say display suit, they have multiple team functions that are really quite complex, way more complex than any template in Drupal, uh, Drupal 8. Even they were able to convert their team functions into templates without any problems. So if they are able to do that, I believe that everyone else is also able to do so. And that's what you should do. <laughs> so let's proceed for the part that is about, OK, what we have in Drupal 8 then. What, what is left there and how it works. Many of these parts are a little bit relevant for Drupal 7 because of many of these parts exist in Drupal 7 also. So you might get some useful information if you're still struggling in Drupal 7 for that. Uh, all, the, all the pieces of code that I'm going to show you, you can find from my uh, our GitHub repo. Uh, you can download the example from there, and it's, it should be a fully functional module. So everything starts from the hook theme implementation or the render array. So first thing you need is hook theme implementation to print your stuff. So what, what we have here is a hook theme in the sandwich module. And we are providing a new hook team implementation that is called sandwich. So sandwich is the thing in that array. The, the, array, the first array item we have over there is sandwich. Um, it contains some metadata that is always that exists always with that hook team implementation whenever it's being used somewhere. So let's say uh, the sandwich defines the default variables, the variables that should always exist when sandwich is being created. These are the variables that the, that the render array is able to pass for the template. And we also set the type of the variable over here. Uh, there is some uh, other logic that also, let's say, let's say if you want to make this hook team implementation load a team function by default, you can define it here. It, the template is being loaded automatically in Drupal 8. In Drupal 7, you have to define the template that is being loaded. But in Drupal 8, uh, in Drupal 7, the theme function is the default. Drupal 8 template is the default. And you can override it with the theme function if you want to. Uh, after you have created the hook theme implementation, you return a render array. Here we, we have all the variables 
that we have had in the um, in the hook theme implementation. We have a few extra ones. We have uh, attached over there, which is, which is the libraries attached for this uh, piece of uh, piece of uh, output output tech uh, output it markup in the uh, browser. So whenever this piece of uh, markup is being printed in the browser, we want these libraries exist on the page also. Uh, so let's say if there is some JavaScript library that is necessary whenever this render array exists, uh, you can attach it for that, this render array, and it won't be printed unless this render array is on the page. So let's say on your front page you don't print any sandwiches. The, um, the library you have won't be printed on the front page because there's no sandwiches. It will be printed on your menu page where you have the sandwiches. Then we also have render elements. Render elements is uh, something between the render array and the hook theme implementation. So this is a way to generate a render array. So let's say if you have some defaults for your render array. Let's say in my case, we have the protein is always the same. This is a uh, sandwich shop that uh, boosts all sandwiches. No, actually the protein is not there. We have the bread. The bread is in the render element. So the bread is always the same. And it doesn't change between the sandwiches. And if it changes, you can override it in the render array. But by default, every, every sandwich has the same bread. So we define it in the render element. And it will always be added to the render array from there. Uh, also, the condiments are always the same between the different sandwiches, which also comes from the, uh, from the render element. Also, we want to add the library added by default for that render array. So every time that is being uh, used, it comes from the render element. You don't have to specify it every time you create a render array, which makes it a little bit simpler. And I hope in AAA, uh, in the future, we will, we will convert even more logic to exist in the render element instead of in the controller or in the pre purpose function. Right now, the use of render elements in, in Drupal core is not that much here because we don't have any problem here, we don't have that many instructions how it should be used. So it's probably going to get more much here during the Drupal 8 release cycle. I hope so. But basically, you could use the render elements to create components because you can attach all the necessary uh, metadata in the render element. Also, if you want to, uh, each of the instances, whenever you are printing a render array, you can override these values. So let's say if your render array contains the value attached, it will override the value coming from the render element so that it will take the one from your render, render array. Let's proceed for the next step. That is the uh, theme suggestions. So what theme suggestions are, if you, if you are wondering what they are, uh, if you, uh, you want to override your node template specifically for article node type, Drupal 4 has added a theme suggestion for that so that you can use node dash dash article to, to only override template for the article node type. These are theme suggestions. Theme suggestions are to override the template or the preprocess logic only for the specific uh, use case. So in Drupal 7, we used to create the theme suggestions in the uh, preprocess functions, but now we have its own hooks for it. Uh, in Drupal 7, when we created the theme suggestions, <coughs> it took quite a few lines of code uh, that was completely separated from the other preprocessing logic. And it, it is not actually even preprocessing. So we needed own hooks for that. Also, the cool thing that this gave us was the possibility to easily add specific preprocess functions. So let's say if you want to preprocess the node template, you can preprocess it specifically for the article node type, so that you don't have to write if node type article inside the node preprocess function. But you can create your own preprocess function for each of the templates. That is a pretty big win, at least I think so. But, uh, yeah. Can I ask you something more? Yeah, you can ask. Uh, did you fix the, the pattern? Uh, can you have now uh, own pattern when you use it in a team? No. The pattern is still broken. You cannot define 
their own pattern. So the pattern right now is hard coded for the double underscore. You have to always use that pattern. Um, I don't know if it's going to get fixed or not, or if we are just going to decide that we don't support this use case anymore. Anyway, I'm creating in my example a theme suggestion for my sandwich uh, that is by the name of the sandwich. So I have two sandwiches. Other one is Chicago. Other one is Yummy. You can now now you can override. Uh, you can create own template for each of the sandwiches. Uh, you can also create own preload function for each of these sandwiches. The hook theme suggestions is being used in the in the module that is that has defined the hook theme implementation. And maybe in other places also, if you want to just add new theme suggestions, if you need to alter the existing ones, then you need to use the hook theme suggestions alter to alter them. And there you have every all the theme suggestions available that has been provided in the hook theme suggestions. So there's two levels of them for that use case. After we have the theme suggestions, we are going to proceed for the preprocess functions. So we have the template preprocess and we have the hook preprocess. Uh, this is something that confuses people very often. So the template preprocess we have uh, exists there from uh, Drupal, the, from previous Drupal versions, from, probably from Drupal 6, because, and it's created to preprocess templates. And what is the difference between hook preprocess hook is that template preprocess can only there can be only one instance of those. And all the hook preprocess hooks can exist, can can rely that this the, the template preprocess has been run before that. In Drupal 8, how we use this is you can use the template preprocess function to create the initial preprocessing inside the module defining the hook team implementation. And then orders can override it in the hook preprocess hook. Uh, the reason why this is needed is because if you do it in the hook preprocess hook, uh, in the modules, the, the other modules couldn't be able to rely on the, that some of the preprocessing that has been done in the original module would have been done because of the, the loading order can be just random in the modules. I think it's because uh, by the module weight, but the module weight can obviously change. So it's not something you should be relying on. In the theme, you can instead, instead rely that all the module preprocessing has been done before the theme preprocessing is being done. So the temporary preprocessing is for the initial preprocessing -process should be done by the module defining the hook theme implementation. In this case, the sandwich module. Others should use the hook preprocess hook. Um, but we have a third example. So we have a hook, uh, hook preprocess sandwich underscore underscore Chicago. And this is specific preprocess function for the Chicago sandwich. So let's say if someone is printing the Chicago sandwich, uh, what is the value of the name going to be in the template? Is Flamingo. That is the last one that we uh, run of these different options. After the preprocessing, we get to the template. Uh, template is tweaked. And um, here is an ex example of a uh, zip template. And um, where you can do what you need to do with your data. Uh, about the best practices of using preprocess function is uh, I, want, I want to mention that uh, hopefully most of the logic that you have is going to uh, be either in the template or in the controller. The preprocess function is more about something that could be used by other modules to hook into there. Or maybe your team, you need to tweak something that is in the, the controller logic needs to be tweaked a little bit. Then you can do it in preprocess function. But if you're creating your own uh, hook team implementation, then you should have most of the stuff in somewhere else than in the preprocess functions. That's what we've tried. Uh, that's what we've tried to achieve in Drupal Core. If you want to download these pieces of code, they are available in GitHub. Go for it if you need it. I'm going to proceed for Tweak after that. So I'm not going to explain how Tweak can be used. I, I'm going to explain how Tweak can be extend, extended or what the backend developers need to understand of Tweak. Morgan is going to explain how Tweak can be used if you don't know already about that. So the first thing about Tweak that is really important is Tweak magic. And it literally is magic <laughs> because uh, 
what it's about is Twig itself figures out what type of data is being printed uh, and what we probably want to be printing. So let's say when a front-end developer decides to print cheese inside sandwich, there might become a question, what is sandwich or what is cheese inside that sandwich? There is no one answer. You have to know the context because it can be multiple things. The code itself doesn't tell what it could be. Or the answer is here. So, in Twig, when someone is printing the sandwich.cheese, we test if sandwich is an array. If it's an array and the cheese is a key, a key of an item in that array, then we simply print that and we don't proceed. That is simple use case, all done. But things are not always that simple. We test also if sandwich is an object and cheese is a property inside that object. If that is correct, we will print the property. But not every time that is true also. Then we try the DHB magic getters, uh, and that, uh, magic is set to get the um, property by using the PHP magic methods. If that, is, if that gives us some results, if that is true, then we return that. If that, is not, if that is not correct, if that is not the type of data we are printing, then we check if this is a method inside that object. If that is not correct either, then we test with the get and is method conventions. So let's say when you are printing something out of the node object inside the node template or some other template, uh, you want to print the title. How you would do that is you simply say node.title. But node is an object and there is no title property. There is no title method inside that object. There is actually a get title method inside that object. So you would use just node.title to use the get title method inside the node object. And that is how things work for the front end developers. That is pretty sweet, I think, because they can just say no, title, and that's it. They don't have to care about anything else. Twig also has filters. Uh, there's filters and functions. Both are uh, kind of like functions, but filters are Twig's own concept for creating something uh, something that they think is very clever. So filters are uh, functions that are meant to manipulate a variable from a form to another. So let's say if I have a variable that contains a string, theta, I use length filter for that it simply prints the length of that variable. There is no filters in PHP, so this is totally Twig's own concept of doing things. They have also functions, as I said. The functions are usually some piece of logic that contains a little bit more complex things. Let's say the this library, it doesn't return anything, it just simply attaches a library for that template. That is a good example of, of function in Twig template. Uh, other, other use of filter we have is we have without filter. In Drupal 7, there we used hide and show functions to change the state of an render array items, render array children. And that wasn't very nice. Because the problem of with using hide function was that it changes the state of that render array. And if you print that render array multiple times, it remembers what it remembers. What, what has been done before. So if something is hidden, it stays hidden. And it might be printed somewhere else out of this context. Let's say we are not in the, in the template, we are in the preprocess function, and we are using the height function in there. You might not know about that anymore in the template. And then you're like, oh, I have this render array item here, but it's not being printed. What is happening? It can be, a little bit, uh, it can be very confusing. So in Drupal 8, we use instead a without filter. It is a very simple filter that simply just strips out a specific items from, from an array. So what it does, we are printing the content here. It just takes comments and links out of that array for this one use case. So if you print the content render array again, the state is still the same as it was before printing this. It doesn't change the state of the render array. So it can be printed multiple times, and it doesn't care 
how it has been treated before. <laughs> I was actually struggling with that half a year ago, and I was really confused. Even though the height function was, I think, four or five rows above the code that I was looking at. It was confusing. But sometimes something half and tweak is not enough for you. So I'm going to explain quickly, if you need to add your own filter or function, how you can do that. So the first thing you need to do is create an extension class. Uh, your extension class should extend tweak extension class that is provided by tweak itself. There you need a get filters method that will return an array of tweak simple filters. And the tweak simple filter takes as parameters. The first parameter is a string, and it is the name of the filter. So this is the thing that you call this filter inside the tweak template. The second parameter is the function or method we are mapping it inside PHP. So I'm mapping it for a method inside this class. So I, I create an array for the first item is um, just a class, so it is this, the same class, and the second parameter, second item in the array is the method it should be calling. So it, whenever someone uses a dream string filter inside Quick Template, and uh, it's defined by my extension, it will call the method over there. The second thing you need to do is tell Quick about your class. Uh, this happens by using the services.yaml file inside your modules. This is actually really simple, even though this might sound scary in case you haven't used, used AAA. Uh, so what do you, uh, the first two first lines are something that is really simple. The first one is always there. It is just a key for services, because that's an array. The second one, the trim underscore string dot tweak extension, it is the ID of my, my service. So you can put anything. You can put thousands of thousand, thousand kittens or whatever. It can be whatever you choose to be. Then we come to the part that is the actual thing that you need to define. That, that is what makes the difference. So you have to tell it the class that you want it to come look for. So you can give the full namespace and the name of the class in, in the class item. <coughs> then you have to define also tags for your service. And that is the thing that tells Tweak, okay, this is a Tweak, this, this is a Tweak extension. Come pick this up and take my extension. Uh, and that happens simply by just adding the Tweak.extension tag for your, for your service. Mm -hmm. And the third part is, is profit, obviously. Probably you have to clear the cache before this, but otherwise, this is everything you need to do. And you can use the filter inside the Tweak template. Uh, adding functions is exactly the same, but in the Tweak extension class, you instead of providing get filters, you, you create a method called get functions, and uh, then you can create Tweak functions in there. If you want to download the code, it's also available in GitHub. Uh, you can download the module that adds a trim string filter, then you can modify it to do whatever your needs are. Let's proceed for the last big section of this talk, that is auto escape. This is a big section and it's, for me, this is the most important one because it's about security. Uh, how many of you knows what XSS is? Or how many of you don't know what XSS is? Let's ask this way. Everyone knows what XSS is? Okay, so XSS is um, a way to output markup on the browser from the user input. So let's say uh, you can. Let's say if you have a form, you would have a way to add markup in that form. Let's say JavaScript, and you could print it somehow for the users. And by doing that, you would allow them to do because you are in that user's browser session. You could do anything with with that user's browser session. So let's say if if it's an admin user that is loading the page, you could with JavaScript. You could let's say submit a, a form, or you could. Change, change settings or send email, I don't know, you can do anything with that user's browser session. 
Um, so you could go with that user, that user is browsing something, you could go to the modules page and enable all the modules. Uh, yeah, there is, I think that the sky is the limit of the ways of using the XSS, because you can do lots of crazy things. So, the rule number one, one interpolation, the markup should live inside the Twix template, not in PHP. If you, if you put your markup inside PHP template, you don't have any problems. There's no need for auto escape, there is no need for anything, everything just works. If you don't put your markup inside the template, then comes the auto escape and then comes the problems. So what is escaping? Let's start with that. Some, so, some people might not know even what is that. So escaping is when we are printing something, we know that HTML works a certain way. And we know when these certain characters are there, <coughs> HTML will use it to render something. So let's say when you're printing EM, it will make it italic. And when you, when you escape that, we will remove everything <laughs> from that stream that could possibly be rendered by, in the HTML by the browser. We just, use, we just convert all those characters in the UTF entities. So, there's, for the user on the browser, what they see, there is no harm. They will see everything how they are in the extreme. So let's say I, my name is Ian Kittens Close Ian. You put that as your username, and there's no other sanitation happening. When that is on the browser, we expect a user, that user's name is Ian Kittens Close Ian. Obviously, because that makes sense. It might be also other characters, or you might have one of those characters in the middle of, of the verb. Um, so we just simply convert them into UTF entities. So it will be pr uh, printed in the browser as the user has created it, or you have written it in the PHP. The problem with the, with the user input and PHP is that we don't really know in the PHP what comes from the user input, what <coughs> comes from the PHP. When, when markup comes from fig, we know that this comes from Twig, so we don't have to worry about that. But we don't know about the PHP markup. That is the problem with the PHP markup. So basically, we just convert certain characters from being just a simple set character into UTF entities. Uh, so what is the difference between escaping and auto-escaping? Is that when, when we talk about auto-escaping, is that we do that escaping automatically. It's done every time a variable is being printed. So I add the same text inside the variable and print it in a browser. This happens automatically. So I don't have to run manually manu escape any escaping methods because it's done automatically every time something is being printed. The reason why this is so important is that 32% 30, of all the security vulnerabilities that Drupal Core has are XSS. But that's not all, that's only the whole car. Guess how it's for the country modules? 51% of all the security vulnerabilities that are in the triple contributed modules or pro project in general are XSS. And that is pretty bad. That is the big number of, of security vulnerabilities. And if you could get rid of all those security vulnerabilities by auto escaping things, they would have half less vulner uh, security vulnerabilities in the audience. So we are actually talking about serious business. So I don't have to explain you how to use auto escape because it happens automatically. You don't have to use it anyway. I instead have to explain you how to not get auto escape. How can I output something without the auto escape uh, messing around with my stuff. So the first the first way, the most common common way to get rid of auto escaping is make your string uh, make your variable render array. So in my example I I'm, I'm using the simple render array hash markup to put my put my markup. And when that is being printed inside the fixed template uh, it won't get as auto escape. What we do for the hash markup to make it a little bit safer than it is if we wouldn't do anything is we, we do access we do access uh, 
admin filter. What that means, if we try to find all the possible uh, XSS vulnerabilities that could be inside that string. So let's say there is JavaScript inside that string, we will remove it because it, it is not, we don't think it, it, it is safe. The problem with that, why don't we do this for everything? That is the most common question. Why don't we just XSS admin filter everything so that we don't have uh, JavaScript in our strings? The problem with that is it is very expensive. Grabbing all the JavaScript and all everything related to that is very expensive. So we cannot do that. But so you can use the hash markup to, to output simple uh, simple markup, like very small pieces of markup like I have. Just EM kittens. And then you will get nicely italic uh, for kittens if you use the hash mark. So EM has been marked in the access admin filter as a safe HTML element. There is, there is a list of all the, uh, pretty much all the HTML elements supported by the P3C uh, standard. But there is it's missing like script and some obvious things like that that are that we know are not safe. There's other ways also to avoid auto escaping than just simply creating render array. That is the most common way of getting rid of the auto escaping. Uh, one other way is to use formatable markup. That sounds weird, I know. If, I, I guess many of you have used format string in Drupal 7. That has been converted into play into formatable markup. Yet again, we have an example of something that is lazy. Format string immediately converts your all your metadata into a string. When we create an object out of that, it will be lazy. We will do it in the last moment when it's being used actually somewhere. And if it's not being used, it will never be replaced. It will just be a plain object. But you can use the formatable markup and use the placeholders to put your variables in there. Um, everything that is inside the, the, the formatable markup that is not inside the placeholder will be marked as, uh, will be considered as safe because it's, it, is, it will always be entered by developer. No users can add anything inside that. The user input is inside the placeholders. So the placeholders, if you use the app, Let's say if you use the edge placeholder, it will be just escape automatically. So, again, now we are using the formatable markup. You get nicely italic, nice italic that's printed in the browser. So these are the two most common ways to get rid of the auto escaping. You can use T function and other ways also, but those are the two most common ways to get rid of that. But like everything, this has also its caveats. So it's not all that great. So when is auto escape strings actually safe? Because they're not always, not in every scenario, we can consider them as safe. Uh, the, the rule that you should remember is that whenever the string is being printed in the HTML node. Let's dig into that. So. The first example there, I'm printing my, my variable, the placeholder is inside the HTML element. That is not HTML, no. You can't write HTML inside the HTML element. That's, that sounds quite obvious, but you might not think it when you're printing a variable inside your HTML element. Completely different rules apply when you're inside HTML element. There's completely different escaping that should be done for the string when you are inside the HTML element. So never output any markup from user input inside HTML element unless you have a specified escaping method for that. So let's say if you use the attributes object that exists in Drupal 8, it's specifically made to support the, uh, to print up, uh, the HTML attributes. Uh, that one you can safely print inside the HTML because it's it's uh, it's processed that way that it cannot contain any unsecured 
uh, data. Other example is in HTML attribute. When we are there, again, completely different rules apply, and that even depends on the HTML attribute that we are using. So let's say if we are in the href attribute, that is the link, uh, that completely different rules apply again. So let's say if you print the URL using the add that escapes the, uh, the, the variable, we won't get any HTML in there, but we might get some other problems. So here, the second example we have here, whenever you click the link, it will nicely create an alert that includes birds, bird XSS. And there is no term here that would be escaped away from in that example. So if you use the add placeholder, it will escape some of the characters away. But none of them that would be escaped is inside that example. So we need completely different rules to escape that. We have created a placeholder for that. That is column. So if you're printing URLs, if you're creating t uh, if you're using t function or format string to print something inside href, you should use the column uh, to, to, to escape the URL properly. There's also other caveats we have, is that now that we have these objects slain in our arrays, we, we have new problems. So let's say you want to you wanna use your translated string as an array key. It's an object. You can use an object as an array key. So you have to take care of casting this variable into a string. And T function, by the way, is just a wrapper for creating translatable markup uh, objects. So T function will return translatable markup. And on the first example, I'm, I'm using that object as an array key. It will fatal error. The second example uses casting string. It will work. Sometimes you need to actually use the translated string. Let's say if you're creating nested option lists or something, you, then you need to use the, the, uh, the translated array key value. There is also uh, other forms of problems that this quiz that we have possibly a string array or object in there because when you have to check all those three, you, you have to be very considered consider what you're doing. So let's say if you try to access array item inside an object, that will be fatal error. So you, let's say uh, if something could be a string or a array, so it could be a string or render array. In Drupal 8, it could be also an object, and you have to take, uh, prepare for that. This is not Drupal specific. This is just how the way PHP works. And this has just made it a little bit more complicated because a string could be actually an object in Drupal 8 because we wrap them in objects. Other caveats we have in the auto escaping is that this is only enabled whenever you use three. So if you use any other templating engine, let's say team functions, PHP template, uh, any other templating engine added by contributed project, it won't be auto escape unless the, that team engine, templating engine, makes it itself. So the three templating engine is actually the thing that is escaping our stuff. So for that reason, we were kind of like forced to deprecate team functions from Drupal because we want to say that Drupal is safer and but because of those reasons, we had to deprecate team functions. Also, for the same reason, we had to remove PHP template. And it was overtaken by amazing Nyantep template. And like, I think Morton said... It was Kotzer. Huh? It was Kotzer who said it. Uh, Kotzer said it was that uh, we, we wanted to replace a joke with another joke. <laughs> and that's how the name Nyantep came. Uh, so Nyancat templating engine is our own creation and is used for testing purposes. And it's actually safer than PHP template 
even though it's stupid as something. Because um, what it does, it converts all the divs into nine cat elements, so you can't print any divs using it. Because with more than doesn't like divs, we remove them. But also, it implements auto escaping and lazy rendering that PHP templating engine wasn't able to provide. So, from that, let's proceed for the questions. I have a mic if anyone has any questions. Could you pass it? Hi. Can you go back to the first section? Yeah. Before you had all those functions. Oops. This one? Or this one? A little bit further along, somewhere in the middle of that. No, before two. Before three. Yeah. It's just a question where. Yes, exactly. Where, where do all these functions go in the dot theme file? Or? Yes. Okay. They go in the dot theme. Uh, so, dot theme is the replacement for the template, template PHP that was in Drupal 7. Uh, in Drupal 7, there was config themes that created like folders where you could use both the previous functions, like Omega did that. But in Drupal 8, by default, there is this .theme file where you put all this, uh, all this logic. Yeah. Any other questions? Oh yeah. Uh, what happens if a filter is called in the template that is not defined? Uh, I think that is a fatal error. If I remember, if I recall correctly, yes. So we have a bug in that because the um, the filters and functions they have to be defined in the module, <coughs> and teams right now cannot define uh, dependencies for modules. So that is a problem that we we have we have an issue for that. But it's probably going to get fixed at some point. But there is a bug in that. Yeah. So uh, that's actually, I'm gonna go a little bit, answer a little bit more wider. So we have tweak safe mode enabled in Drupal 8 by default. So let's say if you are trying to print a variable that doesn't exist, you won't get any notice or, or warning for that. But I guess the filter one is the to, to major problem in the, in the logic that you have in the template, that that will cause problems. So there is a question. Is there a way for a normal person to understand the rendering? <laughs> so, so the question was, is there a problem? No, is there a way? I find oh. the documentation on the renderer awfully confusing. Oh. I would like to learn about it. So the question was, is there a way for a normal person to understand renderer? That is a very good question. Uh, I, I recall that render arrays are very complicated. And we, we already talked how we what we could use as a replacement for the render arrays. Um, so one of the things we would like to introduce is uh, renderable objects. And then it would be an object that is being rendered out automatically in the, in the template. It probably would make it a little bit simpler because it would be less magic, because it could be documented in one place. Because the problem with the render arrays is the general problem with arrays and the magic we have in Drupal that you can, you don't know where the documentation for that is because you just have to know that I have to add these items in my this magic array and they will be someone will come pick them up and that is the general problem we have and that's why we are moving away from that kind of a model uh, so my answer is that there is documentation right now for the and, understanding the render arrays. We have actually better documentation for, uh, for that in Drupal 8 than in Drupal 7. So, because we are using them more in Drupal, Drupal 8 than in Drupal 7. But the, the actual solution is not the documentation, it's just a temporary fix for that. The actual solution is to find other way for rendering markup. And there is all, we, have, we have already uh, seen the problem. We, we, we think exactly the same way that they are a problem to have. <coughs> and we are trying to fix it at some point. Hopefully, even in Drupal 8, before Drupal 9. Mm -hmm. Yes. 
Any other questions? We still have time for a few questions. Yes, there is a question. Uh, is there a way to change something in the Twig template and see the changes without clearing the cache? Is there a way to see the changes in Twig template without every time clearing the cache? Yes, there is a, in, in your site configuration, in this uh, site services the JAML file, you can turn off the, the caching of the Twig templates. So every time a Twig, ta twig template is being printed, into, the, uh, into your markup. It has to be first converted into PHP. And by default, we are caching the PHP files in the files folder. But you can turn off that caching in, in, the, in your site services.jml. There is example how to do it. It's explained in the services.jml, and you can do it there. Yeah, but it seems that it's still doing some kind of caching. Okay, so then there is other problem that, that is in AAA that is we, we use render caching so that the, the render arrays are being cached, the output of the render array is being cached. And if you want to disable that, then you have to also add your own cache, uh, cache storage called no, that will <laughs> just dump everything that goes into cache to nowhere. Uh, and then you have to define the render caching to use that. And there is that, all, that is also documented in the I guess in the development that settings that PHP and the services YAML has example how development that services YAML has example how to how to create the no uh, cache storage. So you have to do those two things to make it happen. But the easiest way probably is to just copy the development that uh, the, 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 everything that is inside the development on services YAML into your your on service in general and use that as a base. And also take everything everything that is inside the development of settings of PHP. And that way it should work. And that someone might think is the conver conversion expensive? And is running of that PHP expensive? It is quite expensive, especially because of the tweak magic I explained. The variable thing we have to test every time something is being printed. Uh, what is, the con uh, what is the type of the variable? That is the, I think that is one of the most expensive th things that Twig has. And there is a solution for that. There is a Twig PHP extension that you can install on the server. And instead of compiling the Twig templates into PHP, it will convert them into C. And running C is faster than running PHP. And that, makes, that can make your site run quite a lot faster. So I suggest to use the tweet extent, PHP extension on your production server. I think we have time for one more question. OK. Yeah, uh, in the translation markup, there's a way to access to the attributes. Inside this, if you add something inside the translation markup, you can access it. I don't think there is actually a way right now to do that. Yeah. Yeah, you can't really modify it. Yeah. I haven't seen any plan on on that matter. But that that actually, um, I don't know if there has been that much thought on that before. Because now it, it clearly would be possible to make that kind of thing possible. So uh, I have to look into that if that would be possible. I think the time's up. Uh, thanks, everyone, for coming.